Well, human piece of garbage, LeBron James, had a very eventful day yesterday. Firstly, the trade deadline came and went, and despite his many public cries and demands to the Lakers organization, unlike last year's deadline activity, no trades were made this year to bail out the fake king. We then, of course, yesterday had Kobe Bryant's long-awaited statue unveiling ceremony, finally, eight years after Bryant retired. The ceremony began at 3.30 p.m. local Pacific time, which was four hours prior to the Lakers' tip-off last night against the Denver Nuggets. Various current Lakers players, such as Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura, were able to fit the ceremony into their schedule and were in attendance, as was head coach Darvin Ham. Not on hand, of course, was the pampered baby with Chosen One inked on his own back, LeBron James. Obviously in some kind of pathetic, passive-aggressive commentary about the Lakers' lack of involvement in any trade activity, as well as making a commentary confirming that which we already knew. LeBron James, in fact, hates Kobe Bryant. He hated Kobe Bryant while he was playing because Bryant's very existence reminded everyone who was actually paying attention during both of their concurrent careers that Kobe was in fact the superior player. That Kobe was winning titles against teams LeBron was choking against in the playoffs with the one seed as the league MVP. That while Kobe was beating these teams and furthering his ever-expanding legitimate legacy, the fraud king had to crawl on his hands and knees and beg other greats to help him steal some cheap rings. So now, nearly 15 years later, his delusional and ignorant fan base can build fake and undeserving legacy cases to move LeBron into conversations he doesn't belong in and never earned, such as that he was a better player than Kobe Bryant. One fan base that has never been having it. One group of people who have rejected the lie that is LeBron James from the beginning are true Laker fans and LA natives. See, those people had the privilege of watching a true legend go about his business for two decades, doing things the right way, never cheating the game, earning hard-fought championships by fighting through obstacles and overcoming adversity, not flopping and flailing around the court, jumping from team to team like some kind of grotesque, ring-chasing mercenary who would then just show up in Tinseltown, Kobe's town, expecting to be given the respect. And I want my damn respect too. In that city, and with those fans, it has to be earned. And even with LeBron's arrival in LA, it has remained apparent that that is Kobe's city. LeBron has always resented Bryant despite whatever fake displays he might have put on over the years. He has shown his true colors when he skipped Kobe's funeral and last night skipped the statue unveiling ceremony. But LeBron did go out and honor Kobe last night in his own way on the court by reminding all of us again what a loser he is and that he should never actually be compared to Kobe in the first place as the Lakers would be taking on the Denver Nuggets in a matchup of last season's Western Conference Finals. And yes, yes, on paper, we can all see the Nuggets swept the Lakers last year. However, here is yet another gentle reminder that the Lakers were in fact squarely within every game of that series, as all four games were within one possession late in the fourth quarter. And the chosen one had the ball at multiple moments throughout clutch time, only to come up as he has time in and time out throughout his career. Predictably tiny. Clanking the game-tying three with 45 seconds left in game one. Blowing a layup that would have made it a two-point game with 30 seconds left in game two. And bricking the ball off the side of the backboard on this shot, which would have tied game four with just under 30 seconds remaining. Overall for that series, LeBron shot 7 of 23 for just 30% in the fourth quarters where every quarter was close. And the overall net margin of differential was just 24 points in favor of the Nuggets. 
Last night was more of the same for the Lakers as a three-pointer by Austin Reeves, with two minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the fourth, tied the game at 104. And LeBron, in typical LeBron fashion, filled up his all-important stat sheet with 25 points, nine rebounds, and seven assists. But just as with last year's Western Conference playoff series, he shriveled when it mattered most, going two of eight last night in the fourth quarter, which included just two points, which came on free throws in the final eight minutes of the game until making a meaningless layup with 44 seconds left down by 10. I mean, we just suck right now. The game overall serves as yet another poignant example that the Lakers, despite making no moves at the trade deadline, are as currently constituted absolutely good enough to win a championship this year. As just since the calendar turned to 2024, roughly five weeks ago, the Lakers have beaten the Thunder, the Clippers, the Celtics, and the Knicks while they were in a tie game with two minutes left last night against the defending world champions champions. I mean, we just suck right now. Now, nah, LeBron has more than enough help to win a title this year, like mostly every other year of his entire career. The reason why the Lakers fail, the reason LeBron has continually failed over and over again, isn't because of his lack of supporting casts. It's because despite the efficiency and those heaping amounts of box stats, when you really boil it down, throughout the course of his overrated career. It's the little moments that hold him back. And ultimately, in sports and life, sometimes it's those moments that come to define us. And on a night where LeBron couldn't be bothered to honor Kobe Bryant, along with the rest of LA and most of the basketball world, the game then reminded us what separated these two players and why in the minds of those who witnessed both of them, Kobe will always clear LeBron because he was the king of those little moments.